Hello, it's Steve White, Trick Boy 89 for Steve Bats 89. Well, I watched Star Trek Discovery Season 4, Episode 13 last night, um, coming home, the final episode of the season, um, and I missed the cameo. Um, I recognised the actress, um, the actress who got off the shuttle um, playing um, the president of United Earth. I just thought it was an actress I'd seen in something else. I'm like, oh, I've seen her in something. What was she in? Was, was she the one who played um, the, the, the doctor, like, from the past that was a female doctor I was is her, where have I seen her before I don't know whatever I was more focusing on what they were saying I was frustrated because I felt that um, they're talking about oh we're ready to go exploring now you know we've sort of fixed everything and people are now um, in a good place and they can just explore and relax and you know they're not struggling anymore and I'm like that's where the Federation and the universe was before you guys destroyed everything. You just spent two years fixing everything you destroyed just to get back to where you were before and you could have been exploring the whole time and this talk of exploration, I doubt next year we're actually going to have a show that explores space and so forth. We're just going to have another universe ending disaster that takes up a whole season. So I was more focused on that than who was speaking the lines and then afterwards I heard that there was a cameo in the episode. I'm like, who? Where? Because I missed the cameo in Picard as well. They had um, Patton Oswalt uh, did the voice of an animated cat. So I didn't recognize it and I saw him in the credits. I'm like, where was he? Was he one of the, the Romulan um, servants that didn't speak or something? Like, who was who was he playing? And then I found out he was the voice of the cat. I'm like, oh, okay, yep, yeah, okay. So I'm like, well, what cameo did I miss this time? Was someone playing an alien? Because um, a few times we've had people play aliens and no one knew, like Fleetwood Mac was in um, Star Trek Next Generation as fish aliens, so no one knew who they were. Um, one of the guys from Rage Against the Machine was in um, Star Trek Insurrection. There's a, been a bunch of people slip in to roles as aliens, you know, with no one knowing because of the um, makeup and everything. But no, it was Stacey Abrams. So I heard uh, Stacey Abrams was cameoing on Star Trek Discovery as the president of United Earth. I'm like, oh, of course I recognise her, but I just didn't, I thought she was an actress. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know her. She was um, the one who went for, tried to get um, the governor's role um, in Georgia. And um, she missed out by a small margin, and a lot of people have said, and I personally believe, that um, the, 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 um, it was kind of rigged. They managed to um, cut out a lot of people from voting, and those people were people who would have voted for her. So she kind of got ripped off. She kind of, you know, they, she kind of had the um, position stolen from her. So, and I feel bad for her for that. That's what I believe happened. Um, but, um, you know, she got to be on Star Trek, so, you know, score... Um, I don't know, be a politician, uh, be on Star Trek. Mm, I don't know, I might go for Star Trek, maybe, depending on which show. Uh, but yeah, so a lot of people are upset and carrying on because how dare you have a left-wing politician on Star Trek? You're basically saying that, that the left are ruling the Earth now, and I'm like, oh, calm down. She wasn't, play she wasn't playing herself. She was playing the president of United Earth. I mean, we've already seen in Star Trek V that there was a black female president um, on Earth um, by, you know, Kirk's time. So why are we so bothered or triggered by the idea of a black president, um, a female president for United Earth now? I mean, I kind of expected this um, because basically in the future it's a matriarchy. Every major role, every um, important role is a female, and particularly a black female or a person of colour. Um, there are very few white males that have any power on that show. I think the Admiral is it, and he's he's um, he's um not particularly white anyway. I think he's... No, I'm thinking he's Egyptian because he was in The Mummy. <laughs> um, I don't know. But, um yeah, so I wasn't surprised. I expected it. Um, and I don't understand why people are carrying on this much about it because um, the whole issue now is... Is Star Trek political? Should Star Trek be political? And people are saying Star Trek was always political. And yes, it was, but it always used allegory. Um, it didn't use... It wasn't overtly political. It didn't actually state... It would, it would do an allegory of the Vietnam War, not actually show the Vietnam War or talk about the Vietnam War. So that's how they did it. And the beauty of that is people who might have had an opinion about the Vietnam War would watch two alien races do the exact same thing and see problems with that situation they probably wouldn't have seen because of their bias. And that was the beautiful thing about Star Trek. It had a humanist approach and it showed people's situations objectively from, you know, basically putting aliens in the roles of um, humans. And um, people were able to see it and receive it and look at themselves and 
perhaps relate to a choice that an alien made and see the flaw in that which they wouldn't have had it been portrayed um, you know, in human terms, um, political terms or whatever. So I think Star Trek has lost something really important because it provoked thoughts, it opened a lot of people's minds because they saw situations from a point of view that they wouldn't have been able to receive it from. Um, and that's something they kind of lost with Star Trek now because although they still use some allegory, that they're, they're not really trying very hard. They've just moved all our problems into the future. So now the Federation has all the problems that we have today. Um, instead of having an alien race with those problems and being objective, now we're saying us humans have that. So basically they're just projecting all our problems into the future and criticising um, the future right. Um, and um, um, say, basically... Um, saying the future left is, is, the, is the future. And I may personally believe that myself, but if you're um, someone who believes in the right wing, um, you're not going to receive that very well. Um, and they've even gone so far as in the, the press. Um, um, Alex Kurtzman actually said, we don't want Trump voters for, as viewers anyway. So the Klingons are supposed to be an allegory of the, 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 the Trump supporters and the isolationists, and we don't want those people watching anyway, so we don't care if we alienate them. I'm like, no one, this is not good business sense. But number two, if you do it clever, you might actually help some of these people see the light, so to speak, and, and actually realise what they're doing rather than just tell them what they're doing and saying they're horrible people. That doesn't work. You don't bring people to your side by insulting them. Um, so... They really did a lot of damage to Star Trek so far as the fan, bla the fan bl base split at that point where a lot of people looked at now Star Trek as a left-wing political thing rather than a humanist objective sort of abstract sort of future um, thing which used allegory which some people were aware of but still I don't think they really got how deep that ran in most of the stories. Um, so yeah, I find it really fascinating that so many people are getting upset um, because, I mean, I don't have any problems with Stacey Abrams. I don't think she, I don't see her saying anything really controversial or anything, but because she's left wing, um, she just automatically, they hate her. Um, and they're just attacking her. And they're even attacking her teeth and her weight, um, which is really, um, I mean, hello. <laughs> I don't have perfectly lined teeth. What does that mean? Nothing. Except that. If I cared enough, if I was superficial enough, I'd pay to get it fixed, but I really don't care. Uh, maybe one day, I don't know. But, um, yeah, um, that's how petty people are getting. And it's just really sad. Um, and I had to comment on it because I, I've just seen a lot of videos and a lot of talk and things, and I'm like, wow. Because that's what these people have to do. There's no Last Jedi, there's no um, Rise of Skywalker, there's no Ghostbusters 2016, there's no... Um, um, Captain Marvel, there's nothing for them to get angry about and to make their, their audience angry about to get them riled up and make them watch their shows and everything. So they just have to talk about current day politics or exaggerate things in um, the media to get people riled up and, and to get them watching. And, and um, yeah, that's why I don't have a big channel because I never played that game. Um, I never did the political thing. I never picked a side because that's what you have to do. You have to pick a side, go hard, be not remotely objective and give people what they want to hear and they'll keep coming back for more because you're giving them what they want, you're feeding them what they want, not telling them the truth. So um, that's what I do. Um, and that's why no one wants to listen to me. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable with um, myself. I don't, I'm, I don't want to be one of those people that you see them spinning in circles trying to twist things in, in a direction that the base is going to like even if it's got nothing to do with it. Um, you see them attacking people just because of their politics or because that's just what they're expected to do, and it's just really sad. Um, I don't ever want to be one of those people, um, and especially not just for money. Um, you know, I, I get I get a little bit of money from advertising, but that's fine. It's just extra money to spend. It's it's I don't live off it. I don't have to. But some of these people do, and that means they get kind of desperate, and they will attack people just because they know their base will like it. Um, it's just really sad. So I find it really sad that everyone's jumping on Stacey Abrams. I know she's apparently a Star Trek fan. She did a video a while ago talking about being a Star Trek fan. So I'm really happy for having this role. 
and for what it means and everything, the symbolism of it all and everything, um, I think is brilliant. Um, I hope the next season of the show is better. They do go off exploring from this point of view, from this place of being um, together and unified and all the problems that are external and we go out teaching other people how to be better rather than um, tearing ourselves apart and then trying to put ourselves back together, which is all these shows seem to do. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to go. I just wanted to talk about this for a second because I was embarrassed that I didn't realise who she was and I did a review and didn't mention that she was in it because I didn't actually realise it was her. Um, and also just to reflect on um, the politics. And I have to say, the person who said it best was my beloved Micah Coda, who said, you know, yes, Star Trek, Star Trek was never overtly political. It used allegory, but it was always political and people knew what it was saying. And that's true. And that's the way to do it. And I wish they'd go back to doing that consistently. I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks. Bye.